Welcome back everyone, I'm Isaac and I am Shaftev. Up until this point you may have noticed that our gun has collided through objects in front of it. There are a few ways around this issue. You can move the gun out of the way or put it on a separate viewport layer. Today we're going to be putting our gun on a separate viewport layer and trying our best to make it look good despite of what other people say about this particular technique. The first thing we'll need to do is add a viewport container to our player's canvas layer. On layout, click full rect and then add a viewport to the viewport container. This will allow us to put a viewport above everything else in the scene. You'll need to specify the size, so under the project settings in general, look for the window options. It's under display. My window is currently set to be 1280 by 720, so I'm going to match that for now. Then, we'll need to add a camera to this viewport, and just position it roughly where it will be on the player. We're going to set this via code, uh, but we need to make sure it's working first. Click preview, and under the cull mask, uncheck everything except for the second layer. Then, find the mesh for your gun, and change the visual instance to the second layer also. And back in the character scene, on the main camera, uncheck the second layer on the cull mask. The gun should disappear. Then in our character script, we'll need to access the gun camera and the main camera. I already have access to the main camera as a variable, so I just need to add the gun camera. Then in the process function, not physics process, set the global transform of the gun camera to the main camera's global transform. Then we can test it out. It looks like I forgot something under viewport. Make sure to check transparent background. Okay. Okay, and we're up and running. Our gun is no longer clipping through objects like it did before. But you might notice that it doesn't really look like it's part of the scene anymore. This is because it's not receiving shadows and the gun camera does not have the same environment as the main camera. So let's address those two issues now. In the ready function of the character, initialize a variable called main env and use the main camera's get environment function to get an instance of the main camera's environment. Then on the next line, set the environment of the gun camera with the set environment function using the main env as the variable. Let's test this out in our level. Okay, so we're looking a bit better, but it still doesn't have shadows. To fix that, we'll need to add a size to our viewport's shadow atlas. The minimum is two, as it rounds to even numbers, and I'm gonna go with four. Hi guys, Isaac from the future here. Um, I've been doing some research while editing this video, and it turns out that the size is in pixels. So, you may wanna make this greater than four. The default for a Godot project is 4096. Also, it's only meant to work with spotlights and omnidirectional lights. And while I do think that both of those lights do draw shadows better with this shadow atlas setting, the directional lights definitely have an impact on shadows as well, despite the documentation. Either way, it makes a huge difference to the way things look. Anyway, back to the video. And here we are in the scene, and you can already see the shadows from the capsule is being drawn onto the gun now. And things are starting to look a lot better. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go over some of the pitfalls now that you might wanna consider when using this technique. The most painful one that I can find is resizing the windows. You can set the size of your gun viewport to the main viewport size in code, but I can't find a way to have it happen when you also press the maximize button or the windowed button. Uh, it just doesn't work.
It also doesn't work if you set your screen to full screen. Uh, which is annoying, but the chances of this being needed are small since you're most likely to be in full screen most of the time. I think what works best is when you call this in the ready function, so that no matter what the viewport size, the gun viewport will always be the same. And then disable resize in the viewport, so you only need to update the gun viewport whenever you change the resolution of your main viewport, say in like an options menu. The other thing to look out for is the viewport setting FXAA. Make sure that's always set to off, otherwise you'll just get a black screen. Then the other concern is performance. Uh, most people agree that using additional viewports comes at a cost in Godot. This, however, doesn't seem to affect mine very much. I have a 10-year-old i5 processor, 13-year-old DDR3 RAM, and an RX 480 video card, um, and I can still manage 60 FPS. Um, I tried to bump the shadows up and the anti-aliasing to see if it had an impact, and it didn't really change much. That being said, if you are hitting a wall with performance, then maybe try a different technique, since I know that this is still costly. Anyway, um, that's about it for gun viewport layering. Uh, let me know in the comments if you found this helpful. I'm interested to know your thoughts on what you like to use to prevent clipping. Uh, if you liked this video, hit the like button, and if you didn't, well, you've probably already left, so whatever. Anyway, thanks for watching, I'm Isaac, I am ChefDev, and I'll see you next time.